In this video, I'll be talking about asynchronous and synchronous programming. So in your app, there will be a set of instructions or processes that you expect your app to complete. These tasks will differ in terms of how long it will take them to finish. In other words, you're queuing tasks to achieve a specific goal, while time and user experience is considered when designing asynchronous or synchronous code. Now, let's understand these programming techniques through some definitions and examples. With synchronous programming, given a task that is currently running, succeeding tasks will have to wait for current tasks to finish before it could start running, as there is only one resource or thread that they are sharing. Imagine you're in a queue, and you need to fill out a form. You cannot fill out the form because you do not have a pen, and you're waiting for the person before you to finish so that you could use the only pen that is available in that queue. The pen in this scenario represents the thread that is being shared by different tasks in synchronous code. By default, UI tasks are running on the main thread, while non-UI tasks such as networking, database queries, or some kind of processing should be running on a different thread. Dispatching non-UI tasks is the responsibility of the developer. Yes, you should identify which code needs to be dispatched to other threads and free up the main thread from non-UI code to prevent your UI from freezing. Asynchronous programming refers to running tasks on a different thread in parallel with the main thread tasks. In other terms, it is also allowing to run multiple tasks at the same time. Once the asynchronous task finish, it then calls the calling thread with the completion, progress, or failure events of the task. In our example, we are building a messenger app that allows a user to send a message even if there is a task in progress. We can see that a photo is currently being uploaded and the user is about to type and send a message. This task is possible on both synchronous or asynchronous designs while they have an impact on the user experience. The yellow line here represents the total time for the tasks to finish and it also represents the main thread. A thread is a virtual representation of the CPU that will execute your code. Since tasks are sharing only one resource, show progress and the rest of the tasks have to wait for upload photo to finish. From the user's perspective, the user has to wait before he could perform other tasks such as typing and sending a message. Just like in the pen example, the main thread is currently in use by the photo upload. So the UI tasks such as the progress keyboard and sending a message are not able to start. If you have experienced this kind of UX, then you understand that it is our responsibility as a developer to make sure that the user should be allowed to multitask whenever possible for a pleasant user experience. To address this bad experience, we will be relying on asynchronous programming. On this version of the design, we have dispatched non-UI tasks that can take long to complete on a different thread. In the improved version, we dispatch photo upload on another available thread, while the progress indicator receives progress on the main thread. Since the main thread is now available to do other tasks, we can now use the keyboard and type a new message. If the upload photo has not finished yet, we can simply dispatch the send message task to another thread so that the user doesn't have to wait for the photo upload to finish. By introducing asynchronous code in the app, we have improved the user experience a lot. These are the most common tools you can use in programming asynchronously. Grand Central Dispatch is a very simple tool you can use while NS Operation and NS Operation Queue is a high-level API with features made for specific use cases. So in this short video, I talked about asynchronous programming, which is running tasks in parallel, while synchronous tasks wait for current tasks to finish before a new task could start. 
Now that you know what is asynchronous and synchronous programming is, I hope you will apply this knowledge to design and build apps that are responsive and pleasant to use.